How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you through the ultimate guide to the upcoming game week 2. So now that game week 1 has concluded the first game week of the season, we can now turn our attention to the second game week and there's a few interesting talking points to actually go over. Now as usual in these ultimate guides, I'll be going over all the stats. This is also a reflection of game week 1, but look towards game week 2. And then going over talking points such as which players to have concerns about, like a Kwanzaa, Barco, or Nkunku. Then finally, we'll be going over the Camsi debate, and is this the week to actually triple captain Erling Haaland? I'll be going over the pros and the cons to that. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. Now we're going to go back to the OG format of these ultimate guides, and I'll first be taking a look at the team stats from a defensive and attacking point of view. Now I won't lie to you, these stats might be slightly useless at the moment, as we only have one game week of data. But as the game weeks do progress, we'll get kind of better averages. And because it's only game week two, we don't really have many other stats to look at. But I think it's still going to be quite interesting to see which attacks and defenses have started the season off well, even if it is only one game week. So let's go over those attacking numbers first, and I'll be using XG on penalty. The reason I use this kind of metric is I do prefer it to the penalty variant, as it tends to be a bit more consistent. So on the left hand side, the top six teams in terms of the best XG on penalty in game week one are Liverpool, West Ham, United, Aston Villa, Southampton, and finally Brighton. So if you guys Captain Mo Salah, you'll know all about this high XG, but just remember they were playing Ipswich, unfortunately quite a poor defence. West Ham though was the interesting one for me because they did face Aston Villa, a team that you would have thought would be better defensively, and they put up some very high numbers. Now all you Bruno owners know about this XG, he missed a ton of big chances and could have actually had a haul on his day. Then West Ham and Aston Villa both put up a pretty strong attacking performance, as did Southampton against 10-man Newcastle. Now finally Brighton, they scored the most goals in game week 1, but definitely overperformed their XG numbers. So the teams on the left are the best attacks at the moment, but as mentioned, this was very fixture dependent, as is the right hand side which is the worst attacks in the Prem. So for game week 1, these teams unfortunately didn't put up very respective numbers, starting off with Ipswich, but they did face Liverpool. Now Fulham also had United, but I would have hoped that they put up better numbers, as I do Percy own Muniz. Now with Newcastle self-explanatory, the red card hindered their attack quite a bit, and then we have Everton, Wolves, and finally Leicester. So as a Pedro Porro owner, this was a little bit sad for me to see 0.71 XG on penalty in this fixture, but that's just that Jamie Vardy tax. So once again, these are the best and the worst attacks in the Prem over game week 1. Don't look too much into these stats, but it's always nice to see which teams have started the season off well. Now we're going to jump over to the defensive numbers, and I'll be ranking the best defences by expected clean sheets. So in game week 1, Liverpool had the highest expected clean sheet of 0.69. Then we had United, Southampton, Brighton, Arsenal, and finally Spurs. So some surprises there, United, for example, put up a pretty strong defensive performance, as did Brighton at 0.57. Now once again, Pedro Porro losing the clean sheet wasn't too great, but at least he went for Gabriel at 0.5. So the matchups for these fixtures were pretty strong, and the same could be said about the worst defences. Now you guys will notice I've actually switched the stat up here, I'll be going over XG conceded. Now the reason for that is I don't really care if a team loses the clean sheet, I care how much XG they're conceding. So the higher the XG conceded, the worse the defence was in game week 1, and you guys will see Ipswich is the inverse of Liverpool's XG. So once again, going over these teams, Ipswich, Aston Villa, Fulham, West Ham, Newcastle, and finally Everton. I know some people are going for those Everton defenders, but it might be a wait and see until Brantwaite's back from injury. Might be slightly happy that I didn't go for Konza at the moment, as with Arsenal in game week 2, I can't see that XG considered getting any better. Seen a lot of people kind of starting Robinson in game week 2, now he does face Leicester, a much worse attack, but they could always give that Fulham defence problems. But these numbers are quite interesting for me, but usually it's kind of the matchup was pretty bad. As with the attack, you guys can look at these, but don't pay too much attention. As the game weeks do go on, the averages will get a lot better, and then we can actually use these stats for a lot of planning. But let me know if there was a standout stat to you in terms of the teams, and hopefully game week 2 is going to be as interesting of a game week. I'm going to give you guys a break from the stats for just a moment because I want to talk about the concerns of the players that could be on the chopping block. And there were a few concerns coming from game week one. 
Now, the first thing I want to say, and I think it's kind of for all these kind of concerns, is that patience might be the key, as we've only had one game week of data. Now, this might even be for those injured players that didn't start to were benched. They could have had a knock or an injury in training that we don't know about. Who knows what the selections are going to be for game week two? Now, the first player I want to talk about is going to be Pedro Porro. If you guys did see that kind of Spurs game, he came off late into the fixture with an apparent injury, and we've had literally no update as I'm recording this video. Now, the reason I won't be going over Pedro Porro and his replacements is that I personally do own him, so in the team selection coming up on Thursday, I'll discuss those alternatives already. I just wanted to highlight that if you guys are wondering where the Pedro Porro talking point was. Don't worry, I'll cover that in my team selection. Now I'm going to be going over three options that I think are quite highly owned and therefore have some concerns. And the first player is going to be Kwanzaa. So an analytics pick for game week one, Kwanzaa came in at 4.5 million. Very attractive, a Liverpool defender at 4.5. But it was a little bit too good to be true. Now I won't lie to you, I wasn't really expecting Kwanzaa to be subbed at halftime as I thought he had a pretty good first half against Ipswich. But you guys know what happened, apparently he was losing too many duels and therefore slot rotated him. And what does that mean for the future rotations? Now I won't lie to you, it doesn't look great. Konate came off for the second half and Liverpool ended up winning 2-0. And overall just looked a little bit more secure in those aerial duels. But as I mentioned earlier on, who kind of knows what's going to happen? Maybe slot puts Kwanzaa back into the team to potentially boost his confidence. But I can't really say if he's going to start or not, but as I mentioned, I'd probably just wait a week, as at 4.5, you guys should have some defensive coverage. Now the next option, Barco at 4.0, I was so close to including him in my team, and if I had to start him in game week one, I probably would have gone for him. Now this might be a little bit easier on the Barco side, because apparently he picked up an injury in training, and therefore wasn't risked in game week one. Now besides that, there have been a few new signings at Brighton at the moment, but as far as I know, the new left back hasn't arrived yet. So with the kind of injury news about Barco, I think that he should be fine for the future game weeks until a Stupanan is going to cause some rotation. So once again, it's a wait and see. At 4.0, you definitely have some defensive coverage. And I guess you could always start him in game week two if you need to. Now the final option is going to be slightly trickier because he comes in at a more expensive price tag and that's in Kunku at 6.5. Now, if you guys don't know what happened against Man City, he was subbed off and Enzo took the 10 slot, which is very weird in my opinion. Now, I just want to remind you guys on Thursday that Chelsea do play, and therefore we can see if Nkunku starts or not, and how many minutes he gets. You guys know that Chelsea's squad is so stacked at the moment, he might not even feature, as you might see Chelsea play a second string team. But like all the other options, for me it's a wait and see. Those Chelsea fixtures are too hard to ignore, and therefore I want to see if he's at least going to play some minutes but it does worry me with the amount of attackers they have been signing. I think that a lot of people are kind of stressing about their game week one decisions. Just remember guys, it's only been one week of information and I would suggest rolling if you guys can. But what do you guys think about Kwanzaa, Barco and Kunku? Are any of you guys actually selling? And if so, who are you guys going for? Now we're going to jump back to the stats, except this time we won't be looking back, we'll be looking forward. And I'll be going over the clean sheet percentages for game week two. So if you guys don't know about this talking point, basically this is the percentage chance that a team does keep a clean sheet. And I use both these two stats every week in FPL. So on screen right now, I'm going to bring up the percentage numbers. These are going to be for each kind of fixture. The home team is first and then their away team. And they've been color coded according to the percentage. For example, let's focus on the greens who are the top five teams. You got Man City at the top there with 56%. And this does worry me about going for Gabriel over Guardiola. Basically, if your Man City defender does start and play 60 minutes, the chance of a clean sheet is super high. We then have Liverpool at 38%, Spurs at 36%, so will Pedro Porro finally keep a clean sheet? I just hope that he is injury-free in terms of game week 2, as he's super attacking anyways. After those two clubs, you have Arsenal and Chelsea both at 30%, and I would love another Gabriel clean sheet and potentially an attacking return. Now after the greens, we've got the greys, then we have the pinks and finally the maroons, and you guys can use this as an inverse and target teams with a low percentage. Now you guys will see definitely some boring games here, for example, Southampton, Nottingham Forest, both teams in that grey area, or Brighton United that might have a lot of goals in it. The one team I forgot to mention is actually Fulham, and they come in the fourth spot, and I've seen a lot of people starting Robinson against that Leicester side. So I would definitely suggest if you guys do own him, or own another Fulham defender, their chance of a clean sheet actually looks pretty strong. But what you guys can also use this for is if you're looking for a replacement as a defender, you can target one of these teams, but just remember, this is only for one game week. 
I use this to kind of determine who I'm going to start to my starting 11 and who I'm going to bench. But if you guys have seen my bench, you'll know they're never going to play. And the next stat to go over is the projected goals for game week two. And I got these numbers from 11 of five. You guys can go follow them on Twitter or visit their website. Very insightful stats that they produce. So based on their model, you guys can see the numbers on screen right now. It's the exact same format as the clean sheets, as if these are going to be actual totals. So same exact color order, and you guys will probably see Man City at the top there with 3.18, just adding to that triple Kamsi debate for Erling Haaland. Now a little bit of a drop off to Liverpool next at 2.50, and then you have Spurs, Arsenal, and finally Chelsea. Now once again, you guys can use the inverse of this. You can go for a team that's not projected to score many goals, and that'll mean the clean sheet chance is probably stronger. So it seems like teams to avoid from the attacking point of view are Everton, Aston Villa, Brentford, and the two newly promoted sides, Leicester and Ipswich, which is probably understandable. Now once again, you guys can see the kind of boring games. Nottingham Forest versus Southampton looks like one, and there's a few closer matchups, like a Bournemouth versus Newcastle. So what I'm really hoping for is Crystal Palace. I'm hoping that Eze finally returns, and hopefully the ref doesn't blow his whistle too early for game week two. The one I'm also focusing on is actually Brighton versus United. Brighton currently expected to score more than United, even though United performed better in game week one. Another stat I'm focusing on is going to be Fulham with Muniz. I just hope that he can outperform Chris Wood and Dom Solanke this week, but Spurs are projected to score more points. What you guys can use these stats for is the same kind of rotation, choosing your starts in the starting 11 or on the bench, or more importantly, who to actually captain. It seems like Salah and Haaland are once again the safest options, Who's going to score the most points though in game week two? But you guys can pause the screen right now if you want to, but let's go on to the Kamsi debate. So kind of adding on to the previous talking point with the projected points for me, there's only two options. It's Erling Haaland and Mo Salah. Now you guys will notice both have two home fixtures and there's a big difference in the projected points and these come from Fantasy Football Fix. So Erling Haaland with a massive 10.1, a double digit return projected is absolutely insane as the models are usually quite conservative. Compare that to Mo Salah 6.9, that's quite a points difference. So basically, if you have Erling Haaland, definitely captain him. Now, yes, you guys can go super differential, but I think if you want to go differential, just go for Mo Salah, as everyone else is going to captain Erling Haaland. So for me, it's not a debate about captaincy, it's a debate about triple captaincy, and that seems like a hot topic for Game Week 2. Now, obvious pros for this is that the projected points in the models are all pointing towards Erling Haaland, and the fact that Man City haven't signed a new forward means that he's absolutely nailed. Now, Ipswich at home is probably one of the better fixtures at the moment, and they might still be adjusting to the Premier League. Another added bonus is the fact that the Triple Cam C chip isn't that great at the end of the day, so getting it out in a single game week might be actually worth it. Now, if you guys know my strategy, always use the Triple Cam C in a double game week, but this season with no replays of the Cup games, there might be less double game weeks. So that might be a massive factor in your planning is the fact that the doubles will be less this season and therefore a great fiction a single game week might be a great option for the triple captain. Now there are some obvious downsides the fact that Phil Foden is not in the squad at the moment might make that Man City squad slightly worse but he still has some great plays surrounding him. Now the single game week versus double game week is always going to be there. There might be some great doubles coming up in the future game weeks and therefore this might be a better option compared to a single. A lot of unknowns at the moment, unfortunately, with the doubles and the blanks. So it's kind of a risk both ways, going for it as well as not. I will add though, as I said earlier on, a double digit return in a single game week is simply outstanding. That's usually reserved for double game weeks. So I won't lie to you, I am tempted, but I might think it's a bit too early. Although Man City did look pretty strong against Chelsea. I just feel like they could get into the flow a little bit more. That attacking could be slightly more fluid. And maybe Ipswich play super negatively because it is away from home. Even if they do though, this could be an absolute hattie for Erling Haaland. And that's why, as mentioned, I'm pretty tempted. So in the comments down below, let me know what you guys are thinking. Are you thinking about triple captaining Erling Haaland or not? Or are you guys going for someone completely different like a Mo Salah? For me, there's only one man for the Camp C armband as long as he stays fit. And as quoted from himself and Pep, he's never felt better. That statement just makes you want to triple captain him at the end of the day. But I think I'm slightly leaning towards keeping it than using it. So if you guys did enjoy the talking points covered, if you have any other talking points, drop them in the comments down below on my Discord server, link in the description. Team selection coming up late in the week, and as mentioned, if Pedro Porro is out, I'll discuss replacements, but it's a wait and see at the moment. 
this is basically wrap for you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you didn't subscribe if you have subscribed yet. And for the time being, I'm just signing off. It's me, Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.